Hello everybody, this is Dr. Bob DiMaria with another episode of Ask Dr. Bob. Phenomenal questions, interesting questions. So I had a mom contacted me because she wanted to put her child in some kind of milk beverage. And it's amazing in America today that people just love some kind of milk product regardless of what the source is. So she has her child on flax milk trying to avoid dairy. And her daughter is allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, milks, and eggs. She can tolerate milk, but didn't know if it was good for her or not. You know, and it's, I'm not exactly always sure about the whole milk concept because in nature, human beings are the only animals that continue to drink milk after they're weaned. You know, there's an enzyme in our body called renin that just stops being produced when it comes to the whole milk aspect. So, you know, water's good, herbal teas are good. We've had some individuals use coconut milk, there's hemp milk. There's flax milk. The biggest issue is, or concern, is what is in the product. They oftentimes use sugar. They use chemicals as preservatives. So I'm not promoting juicing because I know that juicing throws the blood sugar up and off. So I would just be aware you don't want sugar. I'm, I'm learning much and more about how the insulin is impacted and impacts people's lives. I just like people to avoid um just not overdoing the milk situation. Then the same mom had me a question about breakfast cereals because I did a, a recent tape about breakfast cereals and that's a big concern. So I don't really promote grains per se. Now I'm not telling you never to eat grains, but if you look at the ingredients of breakfast cereals again, you know, blood sugar can go up and blood sugar can go down. I would try a baked sweet potato or yam for breakfast, maybe some walnuts with it, avocados, eggs are good. Those are just some thoughts that I have. It's all about balancing out the blood sugar. As someone that said, they're diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, but they had all the symptoms of hypothyroidism, and the TSH, the T3 and T4, um, was more of a hyperthyroid. And now they're getting some trigeminal neuralgia, which is pain, and the neuropathy, they said, is getting worse. Now, I really can't make any comments because I don't know anything really about you as far as what those numbers really are because a lot of people have a variety of opinions and I don't know if you're taking any medication or not. Um, we just follow the numbers. You know, I always tell people when it comes to any kind of thyroid issue, how much gluten are you consuming? Because gluten can sabotage the best of any type of well-meaning program of care. Dr. Bob, how does oatmeal cause in Inflammation. Now, this is probably, it's not a controversial subject. I know that people love oatmeal. I know that they've been told that oatmeal can help lower their cholesterol. It's healthy for them. It's heart healthy. And I'm not saying that it's not. But, from my experience, individuals who eat oatmeal tend to hold on to fluid. It's a grain. Grains tend to deplete the body of zinc and minerals. You know, I did a lot of research on gluten and on oatmeal, and there's a lot of different opinions, and I think there's a lot of media out there. I don't eat oatmeal, and I don't encourage our patients to eat oatmeal. People who come into our office and have health challenges, and I constantly see oatmeal, that makes me wonder if oatmeal is really a part of the problem. I would not eat oatmeal every day. I would vary it. Try some quinoa. Try some brown rice if you need to have some type of grain. Dr. Bob, what are your thoughts on sealants for teeth? You know, it's the first time I ever had that question. It's a very good question. A lot of people don't realize that teeth, quote unquote, breathe. They absorb, new I know that the teeth are not solid, they're porous, so they're going to be absorbing um, items that you're putting inside of your mouth. And I just don't think it's probably a really good idea to have those teeth sealed unless you're having some major breakdown or decay, but there are reasons for decay, and oftentimes you have too much or too many bacteria inside of your mouth. It was a very good question. I don't encourage fluoride treatment either because it's going to create some thyroid distress. Last question. Is gluten oatmeal, gluten-free oatmeal okay, um, or does it cause inflammation also? So once again, going back to the prior oatmeal question that you someone had, even when you do the research on it, where oatmeal is even processed, there's no guarantee that it's ever going to be totally gluten-free. 
I would try to avoid rye, wheat, oat, and barley. Those are the products I see in our practice. I'm sure that other practices maybe have different opinions, but we always do the squeeze the wrist test. And if you do the squeeze the wrist test and you don't feel bone and you feel a layer of fat, that means your body is inflamed. I know this will make a difference for somebody. I'm Dr. Bob DiMaria.